Hello, I'm High Hill Knight, and welcome to my review for Jim and the Holograms, the 2015 live action movie. Uh, I give the movie a B minus. It could have been a solid B. I, as I was watching, I thought it was going to become a solid B. Then during the uh, climax, or I guess the up to climax, uh, it started getting down into C territory. But no, uh, my final rating is a B minus. Based on the first trailer, I was not looking forward to the movie. Millions of fans all over the internet, all over the world, were not looking forward to the movie based on the first trailer. Uh, the movie looked like it was going to be mediocre and garbage. The movie looked like it was going to do nothing well with the source material. The movie looked like it was just taking the brand name and applying it to some paint-by-numbers story about a, a rock group. Uh, and of course, you know, it's not the most complex story. It's not the most complex movie, not the most complex plot. But uh, I was pleasantly surprised that that's not what the case was. And I, and I think that might have been on purpose. Uh, but I will say after the second trailer, the second trailer uh, showed what synergy would be. The first trailer already had me wanted to grab my pitchfork and, you know, and go pillaging, uh, and, you know, light up uh, a torch and go out, you know, hunting for blood with the rest of the masses. That second trailer, it made me want to use gasoline with the fire. Okay, I was just like, oh my God. I was so disappointed, so upset, so angry that I consciously decided not to watch any more trailers or any more footage just so I wouldn't be pissed off when I eventually saw the movie. The Jim the Holograms movie that I saw, uh, one of the trailers was for the Alvin and the Chipmunks movie, uh, the the Road Chip, I think it's called. And driving to the theater, uh, I was thinking about the trailer for Jim the Holograms, and I was thinking about some other live action treatment of cartoons, and I was thinking about like Scooby Doo, Alvin and the Chipmunks, Garfield, the Smurfs, even the live action Smurfs movie. All of those movies felt like they're going to be treating their source material better than the Jim of the Holograms movie was going to do, which made no sense since, you know, we got a story about a bunch of teenagers solving crimes with a giant dog that is constantly uh, hungry and eats and is cowardly. You got a story about a fat animated uh, uh, cat that eats lasagna and lazy. You got a story about a bunch of tiny creatures in blue that are almost all male except for one female. You know, uh, and various other live action treatments that seem to be better than the source material. In fact, Jim the Holograms is a Hasbro property, and while the G.I. Joe movies aren't all that great, still when you saw the trailer for the G.I. Joe movies, you okay, this is the G.I. Joe movie. With this Jim the Holograms, it looked like absolute garbage. It felt like it was just slapping the face of every Jim and the Hologram fan uh, just to shovel out whatever they want to shovel out. Going into this movie, I did my best to just watch it as a film. I even thought, well, maybe this will be like uh, the American version of Godzilla. A lot of people don't like the version of Godzilla. Some people do. I liked it a lot. But my feeling was, it's a great monster attacks the city movie. You know, the, the special effects are very great at the time. The action is great. The comedy is great. Uh, I'm from the New York Tri-State area, so you know, it was interesting to see uh, the city being demolished and things like that. Uh, you know, as a monster creature movie, it's fine. But as a Godzilla movie, it's terrible. It's horrible. It's doesn't get the concept of what Godzilla is supposed to be. So as a Godzilla movie, it's terrible. And I thought that's the way the Jim Hall band is going to be. I figured it was going to be an okay, mediocre, rock band, uh, teeny bopper, tween movie for, for the tweens to watch and maybe buy some merchandise. But as a Jim and the Holograms movie, I thought it was going to be terrible. But fortunately, to my very pleasant supply slash relief. It wasn't as bad as I thought it would be. It was decent. Uh, they do use the source material. They don't just grab four girls and slap wigs on them. And actually, that's one of the themes of the movie. And I'll get to, and I'll finally get to the story of this. So uh, as you probably know, um, Jerrica Benton uh, recorded herself in private singing a song and her sister Kimber took that recording and uploaded it to YouTube. And very fast, uh, 
it became a sensation. Now, one of the interesting things about this movie is that it sort of uses the fairy tale logic of things happening almost instantly. And it's actually ridiculous how instantly this happens. I mean, uh, Kimber uploads the video and the figurative speech of it, overnight sensation. But no, it is pretty much overnight sensation. Like the next day or two days later, uh, it, everyone's on the internet talking about Jim. Who's Jim? Who's this wonderful singer? What's this wonderful song? Have you seen this? And it's like, okay, yeah. But, you know, it's still just one girl. And all of a sudden, there's a sensation. Uh, in fact, Erica Raymond, played by the absolutely fantastic uh, Juliette Lewis, she is fantastic in the job. She does a wonderful job doing her role, being the villain, who's not villainous uh, as like cruel. But she's just like, she's a businesswoman. She's very little no non uh, nonsense. She finds ways to put down the people that are around her and like kill them with kindness. You know, she always like, say, oh, look at that wonderful blouse that was so in season 10 years ago. You know, that... Uh, that way of complimenting people, uh, things like that. But she's a savvy businesswoman. But uh, she sees the video of Jim, and oh yeah, uh, Jerrica dressed herself up as Jim because she was so shy. She decided to dress herself in this character, Jim. And the re reason why she thought of it is because the girls, just for fun, they decide they they decided to sing a song in their uh, garage. They were literally a garage band. They decided let's just do some retro stuff. Got up all this uh. Uh, 80s clothes and dance and singer and and and, uh, and and made their sort of caricatures. Uh, so later on, Jerrica decides to put that stuff back on and sing a song as Jim just to fit some frustration. But anyway, uh, this, the 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 video gets very popular and then Erica, uh, she is the leader of Starlight Industries and she offers not an audition, not hey, I think you like you think you got a great look and a great song come to the studio, let's talk. No, she publicly states that she's going to offer a three concert deal. She wants to do three live shows with this singer who has one song on the internet that's popular, and that makes no sense at all, okay? I understand this is fantasy. I understand that this is uh, uh, magic. And then one of the big themes of, is internet fame, how people become famous overnight. Throughout the movie, there's various shots from YouTubers that they use in the movie. And I don't know how those YouTubers will feel once they actually see their footage in the movie. But hey, that's the that's the that's what you do on YouTube. One of my favorite shows is Ridiculousness. And that's what Ridiculous does. They find things on the internet, they grab them, they package them, and they put it on their television show. And uh, that's the way it goes. So I don't know how these folks are going to feel about their footage being used in this Jim and Hallgrans movie. But anyway, uh, the story takes place within 30 days. Because the girls, their uh, aunt who adopted them, uh, because uh, Jerrica and Kimber's father passed away. Oh, by the way, there's pretty much zero statement about the uh, Jerrica and Kimber's mother in the whole movie. I don't think one sentence was said, except maybe in the beginning when uh, they give the exposition, like mom passed, and then they talk about the dad, and then it's all dad. And it's actually worse than Interstellar, and I'll get to that in a, in a bit. Actually, I forgot to make my point about Interstellar, so here it is. Uh, in the movie Interstellar, the astronaut uh, gets sort of lost in space and he comes uh, focused on reconnecting with his daughter. His daughter's a genius, and she's trying to connect with him on Earth, and he's trying to connect with her in space. So pretty much the whole movie, uh, he focuses on his daughter, his daughter, his daughter, his daughter, his daughter. His daughter and practically totally ignores his son. Where in this Jim Hologram movie, uh, the, at the end of the scavenger hunt in Jim Holograms, there's a speech by the father, and it's totally focused on Jerrica. Uh, Jerrica was supposed to go on the adventure. Jerrica was supposed to find the sequence. Jerrica was supposed to figure out synergy. And pretty much at the tail end of his speech, he remembers, oh yeah, I have another child. Uh, uh, you know, say hi to Kimber for me, basically. But it was totally focused on Jerrica. He pretty much forgot that he had another child, which was ridiculous. I mean, he didn't even pretty much want uh, synergy to be fixed by Jerrica and Kimber. It was just all Jerrica, 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 Jerrica. Oh yeah, and Kimber. Oh, don't forget Kimber. Uh, so that's the interstellar point that I forgot to make. Okay, uh, back to the regular review. Erica says, yeah, I want to sign you to a three-concert deal. And she doesn't know who Jim is. She just puts it in the inbox 
to the YouTube person, like, hey, whoever you are, I want to give you a three concert deal, which is ridiculous. Okay. First of all, you don't know this person's alive. Okay. This could have been recorded years ago, by, and, the, and she died, and the family decided to put it up as tribute to that person. Okay. You don't know if she's a criminal. You don't know if she's insane. You don't know if she can sing other songs. You don't even know if she, what country she's in. Uh, you know, this all takes place in California, but you don't know where, you know, where she is. Uh, you don't know how tall she is. You don't even know if the, the video is her sitting down. So maybe she's in a uh, disabled in a wheelchair. The idea is that Erica for a long time has been wanting to package something for her record company with mystery and intrigue. So when she does sign, uh, Jim Release brings Jerrica into the fold. There's this whole media machine that just quickly, like practically, uh, boom, let's get you dressed. Boom, let's record a song. Boom, let's get to this press junket. Boom, let's get to this concert. You know, boom, 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 boom. It's this big uh, mach entertainment machine, which is fine, but it still takes time to do this stuff. You know, Erica says there's a lot of hours in the day, which is true, but still, there's t it takes time to record something, to rehearse, to, to get the sound right, to get the edit right, to get it up to you too, to get folks dressed, to even physically drive back and forth around California. This thing takes place all around California. And I guess this is in this universe, like the TV series 24, there's no traffic, which is fine. But still, it's like, you can't physically get around this place. There's even a moment where like, uh, Erica's like, okay, our first rehearsal is in 20 minutes. Oh, like 20 minutes, you just got to the office and you're gonna have a, a song recording in 20 minutes. Yet the next scene is them getting dressed. And you know they took them longer than 20 minutes to find the shoes and the clothes they want. Now, during the first meeting, Jerrica has little special uh, starlight earrings. The starlight earrings are in this. And uh, Erica's like, no, I don't like that. Let's get rid of them. And she takes the earrings, gives to Erica. Erica puts it in her safe in her office. Uh, now, remember that. It, uh, Erica says, okay, we'll give you it. Uh, after the third concert. And that's pretty much it. Uh, Erica wants to do three concerts, uh, see how it goes, and if it's successful, you know, probably more, but basically, like, it's her dream to practice that, this uh, band and keep a secret of who Jim is. You know, don't tell anybody, don't uh, do any more Instagramming, don't do any more Facebooking, don't do any more YouTube, uh, YouTubing or Twittering. You know, let's keep it a secret who Jim is, and she just stores the uh, uh, earrings for, for safekeeping, uh, which is fine. Uh, then later on, uh, they record their song. That song becomes successful. Uh, but they have a concert. In the first concert, there's fans all over the place. And there's news footage uh, after the concert. Like, the concert's successful. And uh, the next day, everyone's talking about it. I mean, celebrities are talking about it. News programs are talking about it. Entertainment programs. There's even a scene where Dwayne The Rock Johnson is saying, like, yeah, I love your song. I want more of your song. This idea that all these celebrities and all these thousands of people are clamoring and dressing up. They're somehow dressing up as Jim. Okay, what they did, they took all those YouTube people who dressed up as Jim in the holograms and slapped it into this movie. And it's like, to the this overnight sensation, but still, how could they dress up as Jim? You've only seen her in the wig one time. you only seen the concert for one time. Like, oh, she's my hero. Oh, I love her. Oh, I want to be her. Oh, her music boosts me. I was like, what? Okay, I understand this is sort of a, a modern day fairy tale, but still let's ground in some level of reality. Their aunt, who is their foster uh, uh, parent, um, they're going to lose their house in 30 days because uh, the aunt's business has got doing well. And uh, I guess, uh, you know, for whatever reason, they're about to lose their family home. So Jim wants to do these concerts so she can have money to take care of them. And later on, uh, she asks Erica, hey, can I have an advance? Well, sure, and Erica offers an advance only if Jim signs as a solo contract. Uh, and then, of course, the girls find out. But the girls find out immediately, and then they immediately have a fight. And then pretty much immediately they, they make up. So these are immediate, 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 immediate. And it's like, you know, like, if this story took place over three months instead of 30 days, it will be a little easier to swallow. This is one reason why the movie isn't a solid B. Because that whole idea of all this internet sensation, all these claims, all these thousands and thousands and thousands of fans, are, oh, Jim's my hero. Oh, I love Jim. And they're dressed up. There. there was even a moment when uh, you see a guy celebrating Jim, and in the background on this television is the Jim and the Holograms cartoon. At the end of this, 
uh, you see a guy dancing around loving Jim and the Jim and the hologram ca it, it, uh, cartoon is in the background. I'm like, no, there's no cartoon right now. There's only been 30 days. How's there a cartoon there? That footage should not have been used. I don't, I, but anyway, uh, so during all of this, uh, her father was an inventor and her father was working on this device and Jericho uh, would sneak in and check up on the device. Uh, and the father never finished his device, uh, but she's always kept it on her desk. So when uh, they go to LA to sign with Erica, for some reason, the, uh, the device reactivates, and it turns out that it does work. And it sends Jericho on this big scavenger hunt to find out what it is. And this is where, again, it starts going to, ooh, I think this might be A. See, this will be very interesting. Uh, like I said, the trailers made it sound like it was going to just totally trash the source material. But when you're watching the movies, like, okay, no, they are using the source material. As, uh, they are acknowledging the past. So when, I, so when the the little device started activating. I was like, oh, okay, okay. And it took them to an amusement park. They said, oh, oh okay, oh, okay. So in the cartoon, they found the real synergy, the true CG, uh, supercomputer holographic thing. So, you know, okay, so we're at an amusement park, so they're gonna find like the real synergy. But that little disco ball thingy, uh, that's just, that was just a, a swerve, okay? That's not the real synergy, okay? Even though it says synergy, see, I, 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 you know, it's like a spell with numbers and letters. No, that's the real, that's not the real synergy. No, uh, uh, the real synergy is like at the amusement park, okay? This is just big shirts. I'm waiting for the real synergy. I'm waiting. And you don't find the real synergy at the amusement park. Okay, fine. They, there's clues to another place. So we go to another place. Okay, fine. We want to get the real synergy. The real synergy. It's not that little thing. No. They, 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 they found the second clue. And it doesn't work. They, they don't still know. So by the third move, so by the, the third clue is her gem star earrings, and the gem star earrings are the last piece for the uh, the device. And 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 here's the thing: the reason why I call it the device is right because I hate referring to it as synergy. Uh, when they find the final piece, it shows this holographic message from her dad, uh, which means that synergy. This little device thing is synergy for the movie that and it can roll it can hop it can pl show little hologram but it doesn't make holograms for the girls it doesn't turn jerica into jim it just makes these little projection hologram it's a glorified like night light like, like you see on those infomercials where the kids can put a light in their teddy bear and it lights up the the ceiling or they or they can light up the wall and watch whatever Okay, that's what this synergy is. And it pissed me off greatly that that's what the synergy is. And, and that's where it went to the B minus. If they had given the, the real synergy or some level of the real synergy, it would have been fine. But no, this device, it looks like it looks like GLaDOS from Portal and BB-8 from the upcoming Star Wars The Force Awakens somehow had a child. And that's what this device is. That, that's what this synergy is. Okay, GLaDOS and BB-8 somehow had a kid and it became this device. It even doesn't talk. It uses, you know, beep, 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 and music. It's activated by music. So I guess it's also a cousin to a bumblebee from the live action Transformers movies that by Michael Bay because it only speaks with music and activates by music. But, but, but so anyway, uh, to, they, the girls got to get the, the, final, the final piece from the safe in Erica's office. So the girls figure out a way to sneak into Starlight Industries to get the, the, the earrings. And this is where it dips into serious B minus territory. Actually, it was starting to dip into C territory because in this story, Rio is Erica's son. Okay, Eric uh, is grooming Rio to take over the business one day, but really she doesn't want it. She wants to keep all the power to herself. And Rio feels that he can wants to take over the business and wants to take Starlight Music in a different direction than what his mother is doing. But anyway, he works at Starlight Industries. He's the daughter of the COO or CEO or whatever. Okay, Jim is the company's biggest draw, their biggest act. So everyone on staff knows of Jim. They don't know she necessarily know she's Jerrica, but they know of Jim. They certainly know Rio. So there's absolutely no reason for them to sneak into Erica's office 
for one thing. Another thing is Erica knows those earrings are there and that that uh that, that they're reporting to her. So all you gotta do is at least have a scene where you say, Hey Erica, you know those earrings? Uh I really want them back. They were for my father. I'm feeling a little upset right now. Uh and, you know, it would be nice to have those earrings again. And the reason why she sneaks in because uh when Rio and Jerrica sneak into the office, they also find Rio's father's will. And it turns out in the will, uh, Rio can take over Starlight whenever he feels like it, which is kind of weird that this legal document says, yeah, whenever my kid feels like taking over, he can have it. You think there would be some type of status pro quo thing, especially since Eric husband running the business. <laughs> but anyway, that's the whole reason why they stick in, so they can find a will to find out, oh, Rio, yeah, you can take over the business whenever you want. Uh, so, you know, fine. Oh, and by the way, Rio uh, knows about Jerrica and Jim. Like I said, the secret identity is more for the public than people that actually work with uh, Jim and, and the holograms. And even Rio winds up naming them the holograms. They started as just Jim and her sisters. Like, yeah, this is Jim. Oh, yeah, those are her sisters uh, back there. Uh, but there was a lot about Jim. So at the end of the movie, uh, um, Rio looks at uh, the the child of BB-8 and GLaDOS and sees that he's playing some type of holograms. So, so oh yeah, they're, they're Jim and the holograms and gives them the name. But anyway, you know, th th there was no reason for that sneaking in. They could have walked in. It doesn't matter a later night. It was like, and sure, there's tight security, but he's he's the, the son of the COO. He doesn't need to sneak in. There was also no time limit to the scavenger hunt. They could have found it the next day, the next week, the next month. There was no real time limit. They could have done the three concerts and then found the uh, last piece. There was no time limit or expectation. Oh, we got to do this now. Especially since there's no scene or moment where Erica denies her the earrings. You know, if she had asked for the earrings first, then got denied, then you sneak in, okay? You don't sneak into when you're... Can you imagine if Stephanie McMahon had to sneak in to World Wrestling Entertainment Headquarters or Shane McMahon, you know? I mean, if Shane McMahon wanted to go into Vince's office, you know, he might need clearance to get into the office, like a passkey or something. But if he wanted to just roll up to Titan Tower and say, hey, guys, you know, oh, hey, Shane, come on in, you know? <sighs> The good points are, um, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. It uh, doesn't tarnish uh, the brand too much. Um, so the differences aren't so bad. Like, you know, if, uh, if you can handle the rebranding of, like, the Masters of the Universe and the Ninja Turtles and the Transformers and G.I. Joe and various other things, then, you know, then you'll okay fine. If you really wanted a direct translation, as close as possible to the cartoon, then read the new Jim the Holograms um, comic book. The comic book is, stays a little more, uh, actually a lot more closer to the idea of the source material than what's going on in this movie. Uh, so if you really want something that reflects the cartoon of the 80s, read the comic book. But this movie was, was pretty decent. Um, and it, it, it's it's good as a teeny movie, teeny proper movie. I don't know if it's a big sensation, but uh, it, you know, it's pretty good. The misfits that we all, the internet, uh, torture pitchfork folks weren't going to be there, they are there. They're at the very end. It teases a sequel, which is sort of dumb to do since, uh, you know, you're never guaranteed a sequel, guys. No matter how good your property is, you're never guaranteed a sequel. Uh, but still, they are at the very end. Erica recruits the misfits to try to take down Jim and Hall events and Rio because she wants her power back. But still, yes, at the very end, uh, there are the misfits. But here are some of the bad points. One bad point, this takes place somehow in 30 days. People are going all crazy and dressing up and cheering. And, oh, Jim, she speaks to me. Oh, she's me. Oh, I need her. Oh, I love her. I want to be like her. No, that's decades of fandom somehow compressed into less than 30 days. That just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense that someone who got a popular YouTube video will be offered a three concert deal without even an audition or a meeting first. No, here, you internet girl that might not even be alive, I'm going to give off of you a three concert deal, okay? Uh, another, bad, another bad thing, uh, the actress Aurora Pernu, uh, who plays Shayna, there was some controversy because she's a light-skinned uh, black girl, and uh, some folks that thought, 
but maybe she's whitewashed, the children's kind of whitewash the black character out. You know, if she does a good job, then fine. And she does do a good job. Uh, and there are certainly light-skinned black people out there, so it's not like, you know, she, we should take jobs from light-skinned black people. But on the other hand, now that I've seen the movie from a visual standpoint, yeah, it probably would have been, been better if they went with the more someone like my skin or darker because there are several moments when I look at the screen and she comes on screen or she's on the screen and I honestly don't know who she is. It's like, oh yeah, that's Shayna. Oh yeah, that's Shayna. There's one moment where they're like outside the studio all waiting for the car and I see this tall girl there. I'm like, who's that? Is she part of the entourage? Is she so like, oh, that's Shayna. You know, several times and I shouldn't be thinking about that when the only black character in the whole movie I can't recognize because she's too light. So yeah, from a visual standpoint, and, and, and since she doesn't have the purple hair all the time, the girls usually have like red streets or purple streets, and it's like the full purple. And by the way, it looks much better in the context of the movie. Again, with that trailer, we saw Jim with her like half war paint thing on, on, on it. It looks terrible from a screenshot. But within the context of the movie, it's, it, it works. Okay? I, I, and, and I really hate what they did with Synergy. If they had given the real Synergy, if they had brought in that concept of the real Synergy of, of, of that, the, the, her dad somehow made an artificial intelligence computer, you know, then we would be hitting B plus A territory. No, they, they, they totally, totally dropped the ball with Synergy. That little device, that's not Synergy. I don't know what that... Is supposed to be. I know you want to sell toys, but that doesn't even look appealing as a toy. Okay, I don't know what BB-8 is going to do in the transform. I mean, in the Star Wars movie right now, all we see them do is roll around and roll around and look over corners and look over corners and roll around. We haven't seen them do arms. We haven't seen them fly. We haven't seen an interface the computer. We just seen them roll around. But I'm more excited for BB-8 than whatever this device thing is. Okay, it doesn't look fun as a toy. Not for girls, not for boys, not for anybody. And it's just so disappointing that you took the idea of this super hologram of virtual reality, of a virtual intelligence or artificial intelligence computer, condensed it to this little imp thing that pretty much no one's going to want. But uh, other than that, you know, it's a, it's, it was a enjoyable movie, better than the trailers, better than what the trailer's trying to show, and maybe that was the plan. Maybe the plan was get the internet fans mad, pissed off, angry, and then like, oh my God, and generate more buzz. If they did, it's, it might work, it might not, but don't sequel bait. You should never try to sequel bait, unless it is Star Wars, because people are going to see Star Wars no matter what you do. All right, that's my review on High Heel Night. Thank you very much for watching. E minus for Jim and the Holograms, live action 2015. Remember, find inspiration everywhere.